not knowing that on that third day morn a risen Christ would greet us and hope would be reborn. Lo, a evil had extinguished a life that burned so love of God would triumph like dawn that ends the night. This is a poem by Reverend Sarah R. titled Lights. In Italian, the phrase to give birth literally means to bring lights into the world. A mother will labor for hours and days, breaking herself for you, whispering between fractured breaths, this is my body, broken for you. A mother will do this as long as it takes, so that you, her beloved, have a chance at life, so that you, her beloved, can feel the warmth of the lights, and after all that pain, the sun will rise. The doctor will put a baby on her chest, the mother will hold her child as if letting go is indeed physically impossible. She will breathe easy, and then she will whisper softly, all this time, all these deep breaths. It was love, again, and again, and again. It is childbirth, but it is also resurrection. A body broken, breath fractured, a long night, a sunrise, a breath returns, new life, and a love that won't let go. Friends, maybe Easter is just God whispering, all this time, all these deep breaths, it's been love again and again and again. I think we've been standing in the light all this time. Now that I think of it, isn't it warm? Our scripture this Easter is the last few verses of Mark, at least the last few original verses to Mark. So hear these words from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought perfumed oils so that they could anoint Jesus. Very early, just after sunrise on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked, they found that the huge stone had been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young person sitting at the right, dressed in a white robe. They were very frightened, but the youth reassured them, do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Now go tell the disciples and Peter, Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. They made their way out and fled from the tomb, bewildered and trembling. But they said nothing to anybody because they were afraid. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you this day. Amen. Being afraid is fitting. Being afraid is proper for this time. Being afraid, I wouldn't expect anything less of anybody. 
Mark feels right for this year. Yes, we have hope. There is so much hope on the horizon, just as much hope as there are birds chirping around me. But nonetheless, there's still danger. There's still fear. There's still so many chances for things to go wrong, and so many lives will be lost. It is not yet the time for dancing and rejoicing and hopping and doing all of the work that we are called to do, but yet we are still called to work. We're still called to be present for one another. We're still called to share God's grace more abundantly than we could ever imagine. We're still called to do so much, even though it's time of trembling and fear. Last year I gave you fridge shots and a corny example of me on a roof looking at the sunsets, expecting things to come. They are. I still have hope and faith that they are even more hope now than I did last year. But it's a stark reminder that there's so much at stake and so much we are yet called to do. As we look towards Christ rising from this tomb, as we look towards this angelic figure that greeted the women that morning, let us seek an assurance and a peace that passes understanding, an assurance and a peace that drives us not only towards some hope, but towards being that resurrection light for others. A peace that equips and empowers us to show what it means to be resurrected into a just and loving world. I pray that we may see that reality. I pray that we may see that reality this year. Nonetheless, a happy Easter.
the curriculum that we've been working through throughout Lent that has led us here to Easter has, has an addendum. I encourage you to hear these words and hear them openly given the shape of this Lent in particular. This is a poem titled Breadcrumbs by Reverend Sarah R. I used to make decisions with the flip of a coin, or eeny meeny miny mo, my mother told me so. That was when the stakes were small, when I was small, when the world was small, back when we thought we knew it all. But you grow up quickly when you start to see that not all have the freedom to love equally, or breathe freely, or protest peacefully. And you grow up quickly when you start to see that the church is shrinking, and the world is sick, and people are lonely, and the news won't quit, and no amounts of guessing games can right these wrongs. So today, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to tuck my ego into the pocket of my chest. Today I will listen louder than I speak and look for the tables that Jesus is flipping. For God carved words into stone. Our God led the people in a pillar of smoke. Our God was present in the still, small voice in the middle of the storm and where people were rejoicing. And if God was showing them the way, then I am confident God is here today, dropping breadcrumbs and leaving signs, flipping tables where oppression dines. So yes, I admit, this is harder than before. I cannot use games to decide to keep score. I have to use faith. I have to believe that even today, God is leading, for my mother told me so. Amen. I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever 